What is the scariest story you know that is 100% true? Part 3. Please relax and enjoy. Also, if you like, you could subscribe our channel Thread Tonic. Count 1. How do people do shit like that? My grandfather was an engineer, architect for U.S. Steel through the early 70s. One day, a co-worker who was getting divorced brought his young son and young daughter for a tour of a steel mill, proceeded to bypass the admittedly lax security of the 60s, picks up his kids and jumps with them into some molten steel. People that kill kids are horrifying. But parents who kill their own kids, Jesus, edit, my grandfather never shared any more of the story than what I described, didn't think he would have, but checked with my dad, who also asked, what happened? Grandfather said they got rid of, didn't use that batch of steel, whatever that means. Account 2. Old janitor from high school, friendly Ecuadorian man who went by Ping, worked at the school for 20 years and nobody had a problem with him. I guess his wife was leaving him, and in the process of moving out, he caught her in bed with her new man. Next day, in the middle of town, he opened fire on her. The man and then killed himself before any cops had time to respond. Account 3. When I was in fourth grade, we had buddy classes with first graders to help teach them how to write and read properly. My buddy was Cameron Bell, a six-year-old blonde boy who was a bit quiet but loved to draw angry birds. One morning, I came to school and my teacher was in tears. A police officer in the room beside her, as we sat down after the bell rang. We were told that due to an unfortunate series of events, Cameron had passed away. After school, I rushed home to find out that due to the loss of his mother years prior, his father took him to the nearby church and shot him in the head before shooting himself. I still shake thinking about Cameron and the innocence that was taken. I missed his messy handwriting and angry birds drawings. It's been nine years since the tragedy, and his smile still haunts me. Account 4. That there's a guy casing the bar that I work at literally right now, and I can't do anything to stop him. He's been in asking what time, days we're open, and what days we have security. Caught him feeling the corners of our windows and doors, too. Unfortunately, until he breaks in and robs us, the police won't do a thing. Account 5. Told this here before, but once more... My friend had this neighbor who was a retired mechanic. They lived on some properties with large front lawns and long driveways. His neighbor had a couple derelict cars parked up near his garage that he took parts from occasionally. This neighbor of his started hearing noises while sitting in his living room, coming from his front yard. Every time he'd go to the window, there would be nothing there. He assumed it was a raccoon or a coyote or whatever. He kept hearing the noise, so he'd go outside to look around, but would find nothing. He'd put out traps and occasionally catch something. Yet the noise persisted. Soon, he started claiming that he was hearing voices coming from the front yard, like whispering. He'd go outside and look around the perimeter of his property, but would find nothing. It was persistent, so he'd started calling the cops. Every time the cops came and looked around and would find nothing, so they told him he needed to stop calling them for this and perhaps get a security camera or whatever. So this guy thought he was losing his mind. One summer evening, he couldn't sleep, so he went to the back patio to smoke a cigarette. Suddenly, he heard voices coming from the front of his house. He put his cig out and snuck around to the front and got there just in time to see the doors to his derelict conversion van silently shut. He ran back to the backyard and went inside his home and called the police to tell them what he had seen. The police arrived and approached cold, i.e. without lights, sirens, and when they approached the van, the doors swung open and a bunch of people ran out in every direction. Upon searching the van, the cops found syringes and paraphernalia and determined that people were shooting up in there. Account 6. Kiki Camarena a DEA agent in Mexico who was kidnapped by the Guadalajara cartel and tortured to death over about three days. His story is the central focus of the show Narcos Mexico. But from what I've read, his death was even more brutal than what they make it out to be. A detail consistent in both is that they brought in a doctor to revive him numerous times when he got too close to death and keep him conscious so he couldn't pass out from the pain. Account 7. My dad and some friends got drunk and went for a drive on some back roads. 
and were going as fast as the truck would go as teenagers. My dad was slightly less drunk than the others and eventually demanded they let him get out. They pulled over and he and one other girl got out. He and the girl started walking to town while the other three sped off in the opposite direction. Well less than a mile up the road from where they got out is an extremely sharp turn, which they missed and hit a tree going pretty close to triple digits, miles per hour. Two of them died on impact, and the only reason the third survived is because they crashed in front of a house that two doctors lived in. The survivor was paralyzed and lost his leg and part of his arm and was in the hospital for eight months before dying. This was in the 60s, so medical care wasn't what it is today. When I first got my permit, my dad took me to that corner to explain the importance of safe driving. It gave me goosebumps about how close he was to being in the truck. He said that the dad of the driver got what remained of the truck to be hung up in the center of town for months after to be a warning to all. Account 8. John List killed his whole family, wife, mother, daughter, and two sons. He meticulously planned the whole thing, canceling all delivery services, excusing the kids from school, and even turned the air conditioning as low as possible to preserve the bodies for as long as possible. After he killed them all, he placed the bodies in sleeping bags and lined them up. He then wrote a letter to his pastor explaining why he had to kill them. He then leaves and isn't heard from again. Eighteen years later, he's remarried and doing the same job as before, but this time he doesn't have any children. He's finally arrested after a tip was given to the FBI. Crazy thing is that because he planned it so well, the bodies weren't discovered until a month after the murders, so he had a huge head start and essentially started a new life in the same career and was heavily involved in a new church down in Virginia. Took 18 years to capture him. Account 9. A guy I worked with was riding his dirt, bike through the woods, and somebody hung a cable between two trees. My buddy caught his throat on it and saw the dude steal his dirt, bike, woke up in the hospital with a lacerated throat and a broken larynx. Pretty crazy what somebody will do for something so cheap. Account 10. Dude was working on a tuna steamer and they closed him in and steamed him. I can't help but imagine that as anything but a truly terrifying and painful way to die. One of the main reasons I never could bring myself to do real factory labor is because I don't trust people enough to not tuna steam me. Account 11. My friend tripped and fell onto the tracks, landing his face onto the third rail. We kind of stood there in absolute shock because we thought he was dead. But then he said, Can I move? Will I be electrocuted? We told him to move instantly, and he did. We got him off the tracks, and no less than two minutes later, a train went zipping by. I think the third rail turned on seconds after his face came off of it. I know that's not scary to a lot of people, but to me, it was because I would have lost a close friend back when I was about 12. Account 12. Was working the evening shift at a gas station. Man comes in all disoriented. I go to help him out. He has a gash on his head and doesn't know where he was. I couldn't see any crashes around so assumed he had fallen or something. Normally, we are supposed to stay inside the glass-shielded register area whenever anyone is in the store. I, being a nice human being, went to help while calling the police, EMS. They got there and checked him out. They thought his head may have been fractured. Took him to the ER, I went back to work. Cops stopped back by for some coffee a few hours later. They told me the guy got hit by a baseball bat trying to break into a little girl's bedroom and was wanted for rape and murder in two other states, I never left the register area at night again. Account 13. One of my friends had someone following her home, hiding in the bushes so they couldn't be seen. She booked it to her house, got inside, and he was watching the house from the outside. She called the cops. They come along quietly and got the jump on him. He had condoms, handcuffs, and a knife. When they got his DNA, it turned out that he was linked to a half dozen rapes in the area. She credits her regimen of running sprints to outrunning him that night and firmly believes she would have been raped if she couldn't outrun him then. Account 14. In my town in the early 90s, there was a notorious killer that had all of BC, Canada on watch. My wife's mother, years and years before I knew them, had been home alone while her husband was in England doing tree surgeon work. Arborist. 
She was in her laundry room when a man walked up from her basement, completely scaring her. She freaked out and said, What the hell are you doing here? He said he was friends with her husband and was just coming to see if he was here. Apparently, he told him he could just walk in, which she knew was bullshit. She was smart enough to tell him that he was just at the store and would be back any minute. He said he would wait outside for him. As soon as he left, she called the police, but he was long gone by the time they got here. Two weeks later, the killer was caught. His mugshot put on TV, and it was the guy in her house. Edit. The guy's name was Terry Driver. Account 15. Kellyanne Bates, who was groomed from a young age by a scumbag who eventually killed her slowly over the course of about a month in their apartment, her injuries were so horrific, the jury at the guy's trial had to get counseling, for example. Her eyes were missing, and there were stab wounds in the sockets.